Block charcoal. Willow charcoal. Charcoal pencils. White charcoal pencils. Tinted charcoal. everyone, welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Jem and uh, something I've been wanting to do for a little while is to have a good old fart about with some art supplies. Are you surprised? I bet not. I've been talking about having a little bit of a play with charcoal for quite some time now and I had a sort of dabble in it in a scroller box a way back. In fact, it would have been a year ago now and I actually got on a lot better than I thought I would. So I've had a little bit more of a delve into it and the thing that surprises me most is I wasn't aware that charcoal came in so many different forms. When I think of charcoal, I think of like cylindrical stick that looks like chalk but it's black and I am sorely, sorely mistaken. So I have here, I gathered together some of the, the charcoal -y type supplies. I have had this box of Windsor & Newton Artist charcoal for well over a year. It's really dusty and it's not charcoal dust. It's I've been sitting on a shelf dust. And there's different types of willow charcoals in here. It's not just one. There's thin, medium, thick and assorted, whatever that means. There's like the dregs or the leftovers. And I have the supplies that came in the scroller box as well. So we have block charcoal here. Uh, so I suppose that's akin to what I have in my head about charcoal. There's a wee bit of willow charcoal there. I've got two of the Geoconda charcoal pencils from Conure. One is extra charcoal and one is just charcoal. So I'm assuming one's going to be darker than the other. I've also got the white charcoal pencil from the same company. But in addition to that, and probably what I'm most excited about is this set of Derwent tinted charcoal pencils that was gifted to me. I'm sure it was Ashley. Ashley, if it wasn't you and it was someone else, to the someone else, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, <laughs> but these are unopened. They've still got the they see oh, still got the foil on them. So I'm really curious to test these out because in my mind, being a fan of Derwent pencils and being a fan of pencils in general, I'm kind of hoping these are just a charcoal equivalent of the graphite tint pencils. And if they are, I am going to be super super happy. So the other thing about charcoal as well is because it's quite a, a grippy media, uh, <laughs> for want of a better word, I don't know what the technical term is for that. I have got several different types of paper to try on as well. Most charcoal drawings that I have seen tend to be done on a mid-tone paper and that basically helps you because you're primarily working in black and white. It's just a lot easier than starting on a white sheet of paper and obviously you don't want to be using traditional charcoal on black paper. The things that I've got here uh, are quite interesting. Uh, this is like a textured, uh, it, it almost feels like sandpaper. I have no idea what brand this is. I'm quite interested to test out that but I think this is pastel paper from what I remember. I've also got some mid-tone paper. This is the Clear Fontaine paint on paper. I'm a big fan of this paper. It does really well with quite a lot of mediums and it comes in a variety of colours as well. So I thought that was a good one to start with because I'm sure this is what we did the scroller challenge on when we got the charcoal in the scroller box. I've also got a sheet of craft paper. This is just normal brown craft paper. Again, I just thought it was interesting as a mid-tone. And the PS de la Resistance, this here is a really expensive sheet of paper and this is pastel mat. A very fine tooth but it's quite a knobbly tooth and again it's there so that when you put pastel on it normally the pastel has something to grip and the colour comes off of the, the stick and actually adheres to the paper and it doesn't move about too much but you can still smudge it a little bit so I'm really hoping that the charcoal does well on this paper because I say it is very very expensive paper uh, I wouldn't normally spend this kind of money but I treated myself at Christmas well Mr Gem treated me at Christmas and bought me some pastel matte paper uh, the reason that I have been galvanised into doing this is actually a photograph my uncle took and he took it in the winter when it was kind of snowy and minging outside he's a great one for going on big long walks and he's because of lockdown and one thing and another he started taking photographs of things so he's given me one of these photographs and I think eventually not today not today we're just playing today but eventually I would like to have a bash at maybe charcoaling his his photograph so that's kind of like the end point of where I'd like to be after all this but I just wanted to have a play today so let's just start I think we'll start with the the, the craft paper just because it's kind of like bog standard, not very exciting paper. And I'm just going to have a little refresher in my brain and probably for you guys as well about these different pencils and things. So a normal charcoal pencil 
which is quite soft. Who are you? And this is the extra one. Yeah, so it's a bit richer and a bit darker. And we've got the white one as well. Oh, yo. So that's coming up fairly well, actually, on that on that paper. Oh, hello, Tombow Twin Tone, you'll do. Pencils. This is just for me, you don't need to see this. So this is the block charcoal. Now, the good thing about this is, obviously, you can cover really wide areas with this. And it also seems to be giving quite a dark lay down. Um, and if you use a corner, you can be a little bit more selective about what you're doing. It is very messy, though. It's going to get on your fingers. Now, I've got these willow charcoals as well. I want to compare these to the Windsor and Newton ones that have never been opened. Oh, wow. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, there's really chunky bad boys in here. This must be the assorted. Oh, wow. Look at this. Oh, it feels so delicate, though. I'm so frightened to break this. And then we've got these massive bad boys. See that? When I think of charcoal, that's the kind of shape I was talking about, although not necessarily willow charcoal. Oh, this is exciting. Out you come. Oh, look, look, there's an even weedier bit. Okay, so I'm thinking, I'll just look at the side of the box again. The thin, I'm assuming, are uh, these ones here. Uh, medium would be these bad boys here. These are the thick ones. And then it says assorted, so that might be all these kind of like dribs and drabs that are kind of like in with, oh, this is amazing. It's so messy, but it's so good. Now, I remember this from last time, the minute I've done that, the willow charcoal feels much smoother and it's just, it's really nice and it's not what you expect at all from basically what is a bit of wood. So I don't know how much difference we're going to get in terms of tone or, uh, you know, or lay down because it's all kind of, obviously it's all willow. Uh, but the different sizes, obviously, because again, you could put that on its side and just smoosh it about a bit like so. Oh, 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 oh. oh, you could get some nice weird effects with that. So yeah, there's that. But it, it just creates like a much softer effect. I also, this is really, really harsh now. These can be blended out. But this just gives you a much softer feel, which is marvellous. So I think I'm just going to keep all this willow charcoal in this bit of... Um, in this bit of tissue paper. It's so delicate, I'm frightened to break it. Okay, let's pop that up there out of the way. Okay, so the other thing that we've got here are these Derwent tinted pencils. As I said, that's probably what I'm most excited about. They don't have the same new pencil smell as other types of pencils. They do a wee bit, but they're not pencily smelly, which I love. And everyone that comes into the cave tells me that the cave smells of coloured pencils. I cannot think of a better smell for a room to smell of, personally. Okay, I'm really curious about this. In this set, which is a 24 set, there are there is like a standard little char in fact hang on a minute yeah so you get a little standard sketching set from Derwent that's got six pencils in it and a sharpener this set's actually going up in the stash shop wait a minute this is is this th this is Thursday's video on Sunday's video this coming Sunday this will be in the stash shop and it gives you a selection of the different black charcoal pencils and also the white one so that is encompassed in this set here and I'll just show you them very quickly so there's a light a medium and a dark a bit like there was in the in the Geoconda pencils they have a, a derwent equivalent and there's also a white one there as well so they're going to behave pretty much the same way as these pencils here but then there's all this other stuff now i just want to wondering like how much charcoal is involved here compared to the actual pigment that's what i'm curious about and there's some quite interesting shades i mean there's like um there's like a sunset pink i mean like what how what's that got to do with charcoal so anyway we're just gonna find out i'm not gonna swatch all of these out but i thought it might be interesting to try out some of the colors so there, there's peat and it feels like uh, it does feel very charcoaly and there doesn't seem to be much let's zoom in a little bit there doesn't seem to be much color in that to be fair but let's compare it with some of the other ones dark moss Oh, that's very subtle. Oh, that's very subtle, but I like this. See, this is why I like the graphite tint pencils as well, though. Green moss. So here's like a... Yeah! Forest pine. Okay, so the, the colour differences are very subtle. So this is going to give you like a muted effect. Um, here's a dark blue as well. Again, yeah, there's not really much of a difference. I think you'd be using these sparingly. Here's a sort of putty coloured one. Glowing embers, oh wow. Oh, I like that. That's nice. That feels really nice as well, like the colour under your hand. Okay, now, now, now what I'm really curious about. We've got uh, these three very light colours here. Sand, burnt orange and sunset pink. Oh, this kind of just feels like a pastel pencil, if I'm honest. I don't know what the difference is. Uh, obviously, there's charcoal in these, but 
I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting. That's the thing. Oh, look at that. Okay, so yeah, mostly earthy tones, which one would expect. There's one here There's like a lavender colour. Interestingly, it is called lavender. That's convenient. Yeah. They're very like the graphy tint pencils in that they're, the colours are very muted. It's mostly earth tones. Now, the thing that I'm most curious about is we have to do the smudge test. Like, you can't play about with charcoal and not do the smudge test, but I want to include that with the pencils as well, but also how erasable they are as well. Now, one thing, this is a little bit of a revelation for me. These Faber-Castell Perfection Eraser Pencils, there's like a pink end and a white end. These are absolutely terrible for erasing in pencil but they are absolutely brilliant for the reason charcoal and I want to see how well because these have got pigment in them I want to see how well these are going to erase as well so I'm just going to grab something to smudgy smudgy with I do actually have a, what I call the smudgy smudgy bag and it's just kind of leftover bits from pastel work um, and that's what I use it for so let's have a wee go here e, not actually smudging now this will vary depending on the paper as well, that's something that we have to remember. And on this craft paper, it's not great. So you can use it to soften out, uh, you know, if you've got rough edges like that, it's quite good for that. But in terms of actually moving the pigment about, it's not going to go very far. The block charcoal. Ah, that's going a little bit further, that's travelling a little bit more. Again, but it gives you a much, much subtler effect as well, which I like as well. Okay, and the willow charcoal. Oh. Now, because this is more delicate, it's actually lifting quite a lot of it, but you can put that down elsewhere. So, again, much softer. I was thinking more if you were doing, like, features, like portraits and things, this would be really handy for that. Not that I do a lot of portraits, but even animal portraits, they'd be helpful for that. Right, let's try some of these coloured pens. I'm so curious about this. Okay, uh, mostly lifting. Uh, you can still see the pencil lines underneath, especially in that blue there, that's quite obvious. But you do you do have a degree of smudginess and that green, look, you can like blend that out to almost nothing. So that can give you like a really nice subtle effect. What about the yellow? Same with the yellow. Okay, it seems to be the darker colours are difficult or more difficult to dissipate. So you can see there, you can clearly still see my pencil lines there. But you've got a good degree of smudginess, which is nice. So let's talk about this eraser. Lovely jubbly. Straight through the middle. Now again, depending on how resilient your paper is, will depend on how much of the paper is actually torn up when you do this. Let's try in the... Oh, not so good with the block charcoal. And it's taking the white away beautifully, which again, I kind of expected that. Oh, look! Oh, that's amazing! And that's quite a dark pigment as well. It's just taking it away. Oh, this is so good. Oh, I'm gonna have so much fun with this. This is gonna be so much fun. Even the ones that I've blended out. You know, so I've smooshed some of that away. It's taken that away as well. Okay, this is this is game changing. Let's try on the Claire Fontaine paper, which uh, is is definitely a bit more reliable. It's a bit toothier than this uh, gold bog standard craft paper. I've also put my dirty mitts all over it already. Doing real well, Jim. Real well. Okay, so just starting with it with some of this big chunky monkey stick and I'm not going to get much in the way of fine detail but I suppose if you want to, to block in colours then it's it's all good. Can you guess what it is yet? Okay so these Derwent pencils are a lot drier than the Kohenur ones. I'm kind of like oh it's like scraping over but they are going down well on top of each other which is nice. I've put a little bit of that kind of yellowish brown in just as like the, as the bottom rim of the eye. Now I just want to try and smudge some of this out a little bit. Now, it's not smudging all that way. Now that's the willow charcoal that's on here but I think we can maybe build this up. Eh, his little ears. I'm assuming that you'll realise that this is a panda now. <laughs> and if we do the same round where the eyes are. But you can see I've, I've kind of started to form an eye there by not putting it in. So like using the negative space. Oh someone smudged your eyeshadow son. Maybe a girl. Now the thing is though I see all these lovely charcoal drawings of animals and one thing and another and I do wonder how they manage to get all this like sort of detail and texture in because aside from actually sitting here and potentially losing the will to live in terms of you know, putting in all these little strokes. I'm kind of curious as to how it's done. It's certainly not done on this kind of paper. I can tell you that for nothing. But I think with a little bit of building up now, if we had like a pale grey, see we've got a grey here. What is this one? A natural, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, slate, glowing, em well, glowing ember. That was kind of like a, a brown colour though, wasn't it? Oh no, not it oh slate's like no nope nope nope. Oh that's dark as well. God damn it. Okay, I don't I don't like this. Uh yeah, okay. 
Um, oh, that's a horrible noise. So even if I take this kind of like nose section, there is a like a variance in colour here. And there's quite a distinguishing mark. It's obviously where the hump of their nose starts and it's not connected to their head. And I'm just wondering how, like, the best way to put that in. Would it be to put in some very light lines like so and then just kind of like mm, smudge them in? I say, I, I really, uh, I don't know whether it's just going to make it look really muddy though. Yeah, but that's not really done much. Oh no, uh, okay. That's actually, that's actually not bad. I say I have no experience with this, so I'm not really sure what standard procedure. I think maybe a blending stump would be a better idea at this juncture. But there you go, that is so subtle, but it's there. And if then, if you were to start building up the hair uh, above this section and make this quite stark, then that would give you that nice contrast that I'm always banging on about. Obviously, it's not going to be pure white hair and the mid-tone of the paper's helping with that. But I think the thing we have to remember is here that we're they're not going to be solely in black and white because even in animals and humans that have black and white hair, there's still other stuff going on and I think we'd be able to get that kind of subtle feel if we just kind of like layer up and smudge and blah blah blah. If any of you do work in, in charcoal pencil quite frequently or just charcoal in general I would love to hear from you and you can tell me of any tips and techniques that you find helpful or even for those of you that work in pastel as well. So anyway you're getting the idea with that. Now the other thing as well is that the, the, the starkness of the pencil compared to the willow charcoal which is what I've used for the these dark areas so far this is really where I think the, um, the the manufactured charcoal comes into its own. So if I take the, I'll take the medium pencil and you can see there, even with that grey base, although I've smudged it out, I can work away over the top of that. I don't know if you can hear the rain battering off the window. It's like the middle of winter today. You would never know that it's May. It's horrendous. <laughs> Perfect day to be playing with charcoal inside. But you can see the difference between those two ears already. And then if I t let's try with the uh, the extra charcoal. And again, right in the you know what would be the the inside his his ear hole or ear hole haven't decided. But you can really build that up till it's almost black, and you're getting you know some sort of depth there. And I'm assuming that with a little bit of practice, you would be able to make a fairly good job of something like this. Obviously, I don't include myself in this at this particular juncture. We've also got very odd ears. I might have to make this one a bit bigger. Uh, yeah, so that's quite interesting. I'm not sure. I think this natural tinted charcoal pencil might be quite handy uh, just to get that sort of variation in, in the fur, you know, as you're working your way around and literally just like ooh, a couple of strokes, let's move this over a bit, would make all the difference because if you kind of like go over the top of that, you're kind of smudging it in as you go and it's giving you this sort of subtleness. Now round the eyes here again, the willow charcoal I think would be good for the actual eyes because you don't want to end up with that like black hole situation but the fur is quite dark. So again a combination of these different colours and you could actually start to define the eye. So there we go, if I do that and if I leave the area that I've smudged, here I've just drawn a little kind of line around it. I'll start with the light one. Again, I'm not really sure whether you're supposed to build these up in layers or, or what you're supposed to do, but I think, again, it would depend on the paper. And I'm quite interested now to try this on the likes of the pastel mat, which is designed for layers of things. So you can see there, we have a, a defined eye without really having done an awful lot. And bearing in mind, I have no idea what I'm doing here. I would say that's pretty cool. Even within the the um, the depths of black, there are different depths of black. And if we really accentuate that sort of outer eyelid there and leave those imperfections, you know, we've not smoothed that out or anything, that's actually given a really nice natural looking eye without having overworked anything, without having to do too much smudging as well. And you can really define because that's something I do notice, obviously being someone who draws a lot of animals, animals with dark fur around their eyes, they have very, very dark eyelids. You know, the, the actual, like, uh, the, like the water line of the eye is very, very pronounced. And for those of you who've got pets at home, take, take a look at your, take a look at your dog's eyes. <laughs> 
Uh, it's very interesting. So definitely, like, you can see straight away, like I'm with the size of the paper as well, but I am leaning towards the pencils automatically. I do really like the soft willow charcoal. I think it's very natural. I'm not sure like what applications that would have for me specifically. I think again, maybe a bit more use in landscapes as well, but for fine details like this, we would definitely be headed more towards uh, towards the pencils for sure. So that's quite interesting. I think I will actually take the time to finish this off and do a bit of work on it at some point. Uh, if I go back to this, I will post it on Instagram when I'm finished. But so far, I'm quite quite uh, quite enjoying what's been going on here with our, our little friend. But I'd like to move on now. I'd like to try some of the other papers and uh, we've got this really coarse paper I'll, I will try and find out what paper this is it obviously came in a subscription box because it is a loose sheet but I have no idea when or where or how I, I tend to lose track of these things think about uh, maybe like a, a foggy boggy river it's blue yeah okay if you're going to go for something looser again I want to try the oh goodness me so the block charcoal seems to really like as my bread maker beeping the block charcoal seems to love this paper because it's got something something to stick to so that's quite interesting let's bring that down that is really rough really loose I'm not very good at loose loose artwork uh, this is going to be the body of the river, obviously. So let's see what happens. Oh, <laughs> I was not expecting that at all. Good grief. Okay, this, this spreads so well on this paper compared to what we were trying up here on the craft paper. This is wowie. Okay, so I'm thinking that this, you know, the sort of pastel matte type, because this, this feels like really rough pastel matte. I, I am thinking that this is the kind of paper that the, the block charcoal would very much like to be on a lot of time. Look at that. Wow. It is tearing the living daylights out of this cotton bud though, but I kind of expected that because this is a really rough surface. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> so what happens then if we try the willow charcoal? Let's, uh, let's make the assumption that there's some sort of, I don't know, there's a stone in here maybe. Let's put that in. Does that look like a stone? No, not really. And let's see how this, oh. Uh, okay, it's smudging out really well. Quite soft. Again, kind of kind of expected that, but it's not really, oh no, it is. I was gonna say it's not really taking away that initial line, but I've just not worked it enough. And I think we could, um, the ability to go over the top with this really rough paper as well is much, much better. Um, You know, just to layer it up. I, I'm gonna try with these Derwent pencils though, because they were the ones that weren't really, uh, they were a bit kind of reluctant on the other paper. So I've got this green moss and I just wanted to see whether we could put in some, maybe some grasses here. And that's taken that like an absolute champ. Like it really is. It's it's very subtle. Like, you know, the, you're not going to get really bright colours or anything. But again, that's not really what what we're here for. The green, that green's going down over the top of that really well. I'm quite impressed with that. And I think the ability to layer up, which I was questioning in the other picture as well, is much more, much more apparent here as well. So if I take this natural colour, which the dipped end is supposed to be grey, curious as to what will happen. There isn't even a hint of that pencil stroke left behind. Look at that. So you could get some really interesting sky effects with that. This is so much fun. I think what I'll do is, if I just go back down to my rock here, I'm a bit excited about my rock. If I blend this out, uh, you know, just to give a bit of, I don't know, like just a bit of something. <laughs> Does that look more like a rock? Again, rocks tend to have quite sort of sharp edges and I've just really sort of destroyed all that, haven't I? So we could even, let's take like a bluish colour, like a the dark blue, because obviously we're working on blue paper here. So what did we decide this was? Ocean deep. Ocean deep. Now, knowing how well that's just blended out, I'm really curious to see what happens here. If we add in some of this to our pretend half sky here. Uh, okay. So it's doing something. It's not doing a huge amount. I was kind of hoping it would be a little bit more blue than that. So maybe I could try some of this really skinny willow charcoal. This is so scary. And you can get some super fine lines with that as well. Oh, this is amazing. So happy right now. <laughs> And if we're really careful, I've got big jumbo blending stumps here. The probably point on these will probably be too thick for this, but I can still blend out those lines that I've made with the, the willow charcoal so I can make them softer 
without taking them away. So if you wanted to have, you know, this like jagged edge here, it's still there, but it looks a little bit less like a pencil line. Right, let's wind down some of this. See if we can blend this in with the, you know, I'm thinking like sandy, mossy stuff. Bring that all the way down there. That color looks quite bright on there. And I'll maybe mix it with a bit of the green moss and just see what happens if we blend those out together. And there's something I never thought I'd be doing is mixing colours and charcoal on a bit of sandpaper. <laughs> it's super exciting. Let's try with this blending stump. I don't know how clean this blending stump is. Not very. Look at that. And we can just blend that straight in with the, the, the charcoal that's already there and it's just, just doing it. It's like, yeah, okay, let's, let's boogie. Oh boy. Oh, I've just dropped something. Oh no, I blew too hard there. <laughs> And it's made something roll off the desk. That's hilarious. Uh, it's disappeared into what I call the Bermuda Triangle. Between the windowsill and the edge of the desk, there's a gap of about this. And obviously it's just the right size for pencils to fall down. I need that gap though, because there's all sorts of things fastened to the windowsill. Uh, you know, like lights and the... So uh, that gap has to be there. <laughs> I'll need to design some sort of contraption to you know, design a, a pencil catcher or something. Okay, I am really happy with this paper. Like, yes, I think it's a wee bit rough. But what this leads me to believe is that the pastel mat might be perfect because the craft paper and the clear fontaine paper are quite smooth. And this is like the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Like I can, I can t like, you know, like exfoliate my fingers with this, it's that rough. So the pastel mat just isn't quite as rough. So I think we might be onto a winner with the pastel mat. But that's, um, that's really opened my eyes. Cause like, oh, you have like a little bit of reflection on the water here as well with your white pencil. Just, oh, I'll put that in there as well. It's literally just lines. Like it's just lines. And then if you go very, very delicately, let's try and get the black off of this. Uh, you know, I don't blend them out completely. There's so much you could do with this, like so, so, so much. It would require a little bit of practice. And even if you wanted to have, say there was like a, like a sunset or something going on, you could just pop a little bit of pink in your clouds, you know, like reflecting off the clouds and off you go again. We could put a little bit in here, maybe a little bit of white. So start with the white there and blend that out. This, uh, this paper is a bit, uh, a bit rough on my old blending stump here. But blending stumps are cheap. They're easy to come by. So it's not really too big a deal. But do you see what I mean about doing things like clouds? That's that's really good fun as well. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of misplaced my black now here, but obviously I, I didn't really plan this out. This just kind of happened by accident. So I'm wondering as well, I've put this, uh, this moss color back in. Oh, I'll get some grass in there. <sighs> If I use white as well, can I blend this and will it give me a slightly lighter green? But can I do it without getting rid of the the actual shape of the, the marks? You know, like the actual mark making? And the answer is sort of. <laughs> the other thing that I've seen done with charcoal as well is to actually scrape off, so like see in these dark areas, um, is to take like the side of a knife or whatever. I've got an exacto knife here. I've got to be very careful with this because of involuntary hand twitches. So I'll keep my other hand well out of the way and I'll work away from myself. But I've seen people scratch out details like this and it's quite commonly used in grass. You know, the texture. So if I just see, oh, you can't even see that, it's so delicate. But yeah, that that's uh, a really interesting way to, oh, what a horrible noise. That's a really interesting way to add interest into your picture. He's like, I can almost start landscaping there. There's the start of a little hill off in the distance there. Yeah, this is super interesting. Super, super interesting. So once again, I've got like half a picture. So uh, again, all the different types of charcoal seem to behave quite well. They, they all seem quite uh, quite happy and cooperative, generally speaking. Although there's a definite difference in feel and intensity and obviously ability. The likes of the block charcoal, you're not gonna use for detail. Well, I suppose you could if it was a bigger, you know, if you're working on a bigger surface. But you've got the pencil ability here, which I obviously love it. But even the little sticks of willow charcoal, it's great for getting in and doing bits and bobs here and there. So that's really good fun as well. Okay, let's try with the pastel mat now. I'm, I'm really hoping that this is going to be amazing. You know, if you were going to have some some hills in the background, let's uh, let's just make a mess and see what happens. Oh, okay, I've got an extra line there. That's fine. Okay, so these are going to be my hills. 
and that is oh it's picked up the colour from the last one my bad the willow charcoal's going nowhere on this it's like going absolutely nowhere okay no 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 <laughs> okay so really not that excited about that let's try um let's try the block charcoal see what happens here I might even try with a cotton bud again I'll get a clean one no the pastel mat does not like this at all or the charcoal doesn't like the pastel mat. Okay, that's really interesting and I'm a bit deflated about that because I thought that was going to be the beans and it's not. <laughs> it's, the smudgy factor is uh, is not not the best on here. I wonder if this is erasable. Oh, good grief. If this is erasable. Oh, no, 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 no. E no, 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 no. Okay. Well, that's an interesting experiment. So again, the, the charcoal's less, it's more reluctant to move about on here. So this would probably be better for portraits if you were going to use it for that. I don't know. Uh, but even at that, I'm not, I'm not sure about this at all. But yeah, for, for actual drawing purposes, this seems to be considerably better. This is the Derwent pencil and it seems to really enjoy this paper. Again, not, not much room for manoeuvre, but definitely enjoys being on the paper. So what about the Geoconda pencils then? Again, same thing. I don't think this paper is suited to these at all. I would be reluctant to use this paper for this. I just want to do a bit of a smudge test here with this. Oh, no, 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 no. It, does, it doesn't feel nice either. It actually felt better on this rougher paper. I am going to have to go and find out what this paper is because that's really annoying. <laughs> I have no idea what it is, like I actually got no idea. That was a really interesting experiment and on the basis that I don't know what this paper is, if anybody rem oh, now wait a minute, I think this is the, I think, I think this is the Canson pastel, it's like me tent or me tent. I'm sure that's what this is and that would be my recommendation. The Clairefontaine paper, even though this isn't really designed for charcoal, it works pretty well on that, but for, for maximum movement and ability to do stuff, I would say that this paper is probably the best. I'm almost sure this is a Canson paper. That's been a nice little exploration for me today. I really like these tinted charcoal pencils. I don't know how well they're going to sharpen but I'm quite surprised by the colour that's come up, especially when you start to blend it out with other things. I do think I'm probably going to go back and do a little bit more on our little panda friend here. Uh, I think that might be a little project for me another day. My neck and my shoulder is starting to hurt, but I've done this in two sittings this video, which is a vast improvement on the last week or so. So long may that continue. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed kind of like coming on this little exploration with me today. I don't know if anybody's going to learn anything from this, um, but if anybody has any comments or wants to f uh, give me any of their words or wisdom, I'm very much open to that. And I want to thank you very much for for watching. As I said, there will be this little set of uh, charcoal pencils from Derwent, the little set of six. That's going to be in the stash shop on Sunday if you want to check it out then. All I want you to do now is stay safe. Please take care of each other and I will see you back in the cave on Sunday for another video. Have a good day everyone. Bye bye for now.